Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Resident Alien. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, uh, we have Harry in New York tripping balls on acid, um... Just because, uh, and now because of it, he can't control his transformation. At the same time, Austin's having her conversation, what's her name, uh, Villa Linda, about the whole Goliath thing. And we find out, cool, Goliath is dead, which is like super sucky because like, Austin's, Austin's like, yeah, that was kind of our last chance to communicate to the um, to Harry's species so that they could not come to this planet and destroy it. So there's that element to it. But... It turns out uh, Goliath held on for as long as possible. I wonder, is it a situation where that signal had been playing over and over and over and over for a long time? Because Goliath, much like Harry, had become more and more human. Because Goliath's been here at the bare, bare minimum, well, not from what we know, 33 years. So, we don't know if Goliath came before then or not, or whether this was Goliath's first encounter, but I'm assuming the human that found Goliath, because Goliath ended up ping, picking up a paintbrush afterwards, so I wonder, did Goliath kind of like, oh, uh, the human, I, well, human, he indirectly ended up killing, ended up, maybe that became the form he took going forward, like Harry killed, well, the real Harry Vendor Spiegel ended up disguising as him, right? maybe it's a similar thing in that regard, because we never actually got to see what human form Goliath took, but... It all seems, I mean, it's, it is kind of sad at the end of the day, because I, I love, and it's really heartbreaking, because for Harry, he's like, right, he looks around, he sees all these humans together, like, obviously, he doesn't like humans, but the fact is that they're together, they have someone to make them, him, them not feel so alone in the world. They're surrounded by so many people, he was hoping at the very least he could find someone that could connect to his alien roots, and not feel so alone in a world that isn't his anymore, you know, but at least if he had someone, it makes you feel like this is your world, like you belong, you know, and he doesn't have that anymore. His one connection to all of that is gone. But then he finds out from um, Asta, it's like, yeah, but he he um, he he died and he was petrified. It's like, wait, he what? What you saw his body? He was standing. I was like, why does that matter? I was like, oh, and which is interesting because they even love Asta being like, wait, you could have told me that when your people die, you petrify, which is pretty crazy way to die. I was like, that's interesting. But they go and check out the body and Harry smashes it. And I was like, oh, at first I was like, villain, she's hiding something because the way Harry was like suggesting. But I'm like, yeah, it does seem like she's grief stricken, but it's like, there's still more to it. Smashes the body. Turns out Goliath was pregnant. In fact, he mixed his DNA with um, Villa Linda's and ended up, they ended up having a baby together, which part of me was almost like, I think we'll get that element going forward. I think it's going to be Harry and Asta. Because I've always wanted Harry and Asta to get together. Like, I, I always wanted that. But it might not, you know, they're just, like, they're just friends. But it might be like a, almost a interesting co-parenting thing. Which I think would be very befitting. Because Harry is someone who is both alien and part human. And so is his baby. And I love that that being the through line for this. Because Harry's like, yeah, I went to try and find someone who was a little like me. I found someone who's exactly like me. Very much human and alien. Even he's like... Obviously, their species only mingles with themselves, so he has no idea what this baby's going to look like. Is it going to look half human, half alien? Is it going to look more human? Like, what? What that? What's that going to look like? I have no idea. That's going to be fascinating. So, that's that's really interesting. Um, but like, Villa Linda didn't want to give the baby away, obviously, because she, I didn't know whether she thought like, oh, you're one of um, Goliath's species that you're going to take the baby back to your planet. But it's like, it's still her baby. But, you know, it's like, right, Goliath always knew somebody would come after it. So I'm assuming like the government or maybe even his own species, because it's like that thing might be considered an abomination. I mean, hell, for all we know, Harry might be considered an abomination amongst their species because he spent so much. It's like, oh, you're more human and alien. So even his own species would reject him. But this gives him something, an outlook that want to protect this planet even more because... This is the planet that your part of your baby's DNA comes from this planet now. So it's like you have even more incentive to want to keep this planet around aside from just wanting to protect Asa because Asa's not going to go anywhere with you. I mean, granted, you're without a ship, so there's no getting off the planet for you anyway, but still. I was I was so curious, obviously, like her and them and Lisa being in the same city, her piecing it together, like looking at the alien language, recognizing it on Goliath. You're like, oh, boy. And eventually led her to the art gallery. Uh, 
where she saw the goo like leaking from the bag, and so she uh, ends up shooting Valinda. She's not dead; she's still alive, but which is good. Uh, but there's always a chance that someone else might follow the same clues and wind up there. Granted, Valinda has nothing to like. Goliath's body's going along with the eggs, so there's nothing there, but. Sadly for Harry and Asta, it wasn't just Lisa that was after them. Um, it was other people, too. Because it turns out, obviously, the, the Galvin Powell company or whatever group, like, they were after Harry because I guess they were... Because Harry, they weren't sure they could really trust Harry anymore. I guess, like, the whole Sam thing, him killing Sam wasn't enough. But I guess it's also, like, right, he's here in New York. Like, they don't know why. He might be asking too many questions. Also, because Asta showed up, too, like, asking questions. So it's like, we have no idea what that group's about, what they're hiding. But now it's like, cool, you have the government after you, plus you have this group after you. Which, luckily for you, Lisa ended up killing them. But that through line is still there and very prevalent. So that's definitely going to be something we see more going forward. So that's definitely going to be interesting. Um, but, uh, yo... Harry on the train, like, the moment they focused on the blood, I was like, oh, that's interesting, I was like, what's up, I was like, oh, is that supposed to signify, it's not blood, but, like, goo from the egg, I'm like, is it, um, and it let Lisa find, and I love that, like, Harry, it was almost, like, very Matrix-esque, because, like, Harry's, like, trying, not even trying, de de blocking her blows, and it's just almost like, he's doing it one hand, and I'm like, I love this, that he's, like, dodging all her blows, she's pulling out the knife, and it's doing nothing, and then even when she does, like, hit him, she's, like, punching it, and he's like, ow, I'm like, oh, poor Lisa, and then he grabs her and strangles her, and she's like, you, you, you're the alien, I was like, I was wondering if he was, because, well, he threw her before, but then she got away, so I thought, like, he was going to do it again, but she was going to survive, he didn't want to kill her, because, you know, he was reluctant, because, like, well, Asta, uh, wouldn't want that, told her not to kill anyone anymore, and so his little baby hands come out again, and instead of strangling her, his hands literally went inside of her throat, which that whole sequence, I was like, man, that reminds me of Banshee, side note, great, fantastic show. If you've never seen it, you should. Not trying to overhype it or anything. I've talked about it before. It is hands down still my favorite crime drama. It's a really good show. It's just her death was super metal. Because I'm just like, for one, it's the fact is that that death reminded me of like two different deaths in Banshee that were like mad brutal. That little hands in her throat, brutal. And that, so that reminded me of one death, her head getting lopped off by the train. Because I didn't see that coming and it's just like, oh, oh. Lisa got it because I thought he was just going to like oh do that she was already dead and then just going to dump her body because I'm pretty like, not unless I was mistaken but it did seem like his hands pierced her throat I was like that's brutal and then she got decapitated I was like yo to be fair Lisa was a psychopath plus she found out too much so she couldn't live but I also love Harry immediately like the moment Austin started coming back he dumps the body pretends like he's reading she's like what happened to when he's like uh, it, it's a cheap train did you get my ice cream and it's like where'd that blood come from he's like so I kind of killed that evil woman but it's okay she was evil and it's like okay interesting like I was gone for a couple minutes and this went what so See what happens when you leave Harry unsupervised for a long period of time? I mean, granted, lucky too, because if you were there, Lisa probably would have killed you or you see you as a hostage. So it all worked out in the end. So now Harry's secret still kept safe. So once again, Lisa's a psychopath because she, she's not a good person. She literally killed everyone in her way, even though she didn't really have to. Like, um, duh, what's his face? Uh, David's kind of the more calm, collected person, so it's like, yeah, you'd rather have him still alive, and, but still, I was like I said, that was, that was brutal, I didn't know Lisa was gonna get it that hard, but Party's almost like, she kind of deserves it, because she's kind of like the most evil person we met so far, just with what she's willing to do, I mean, once again, she's taking orders, but she's kind of a sociopath, so it, it all worked out in the end, but I still kind of feel so bad for her, but like I said, that was brutal and metal as hell, uh, so, that's been taken care of, um, so I love that, uh, Dan was asking Austin later on, it's like, wow, you've been quiet, it's like, yeah, the one alien that was left, we found out they're dead, but it turns out they were pregnant, and now Harry has that egg in the ba uh, bag, and Dan's just like, I liked it better when you were quiet, and she's like, yeah, me too, I was like, this, this is our reality, this is, this is what it means to be in the know about what's going on, so I love it, um, at the same time, there's so many uh, moving pieces to the whole thing going down in patience. Well, first and foremost, I was wondering whether or not there, that whole um, 
Darcy sleeping in Max's room thing was going to get awkward. Luckily, Dor like I was, I wondered last episode, I was like, oh, is Max going to come back to find her? Like, oh, like Goldilocks sleeping in my bed type of thing. And it's like, which would be the very apt comparison considering it's like, right, the three bears, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and Baby Bear type of thing going on there. So uh, Goldilocks is actually a really, really good apt description. But uh, no, Max went over to Sahara, so like he wasn't there. So... But luckily, Ben was like, yo, Kate, uh, get out of here, Kate's here. And Darcy's almost like, really? Like, I'm an adult. I never thought I'd have to crawl out someone's bedroom window again. Uh, I love that she's like, oh, let me get the weed. Oh, let me get the candy, too. Uh, and leaves. Uh, so, I, you know. But then, like, Kate immediately comes back. Oh, wow, is this table? Like, the fact that she noticed that immediately is like, oh, you put that up. It's like, oh, do you want to keep that? He's like, no. I, I want what you want. She's like, well, I want what you want. It's like, I want what you want if that's what you want. And so he ends up taking it down and he put, like, doesn't he have an office of his own? Like, why didn't he just actually put it in his own office? But I guess it's like, right, out of sight, out of mind. If it's in Liv's office, it's fine. Like, no one's going to notice. Like, but if it's in my office, then Kate's going to be like, oh, you put it in here too. You know, so I, that was his excuse to kind of put it up. I love it. Um, and it also makes you go like, definitely doesn't seem like, Everything in that relationship is copacetic. I don't think they really talk about their issues. To be fair, once again, the the hot, um, steamy, like very BDSM sex that they've been having ever since they beat up um, Lisa and David that that um, that kind of took away from some of the issues they had in a relationship. But I think a lot of that start to like speed back up again because obviously, like darcy's hitting the gym and i think she even says like it's the first time she's going back to the gym in 15 years she's like yeah i took a day break 15 years ago it's like right because it was all triggering because it's almost like right the leg like she could have lost her leg she could have died and so there's still a lot of that because also darcy feels like i wouldn't be who i am right now if it because that, that's also the that's why she takes such offense when people especially her parents get on her so much about who she is now because who she is now like maybe there was some small part of her personality that was like that before but it's just a reminder of like yeah like i went through something crappy and traumatic and it just seems like you're just telling me to kind of move on like that i'm not okay as i am but that's also because she has issues with who she is now but she also she puts on a brave face so like it's all de a defense mechanism so yeah she feels so bad for Darcy, but I did love the whole her and Kate thing, um, and it's like, oh, you're going six, I'm going seven, it's like, oh, you must need glasses, it says eight, oh, okay, beep, 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 and then they start challenging each other, I'm like, I love it, um, I was wondering if there was some, any part of Ben that was there, uh, I love that she made all those jokes trying to make Ben feel uncomfortable, but the moment, it's just kind of like, the moment she starts talking to Kate, because Kate figures out, like, oh my god, the last time I tasted, like, kind of soapy beer, it's because I was in my first trimester, and I was pregnant, so, now she thinks she's pregnant, but she's like, I don't want to have another baby because that means, again, I'm going to have to put my life on hold. Because there's, because we know, like, she talked about it a couple episodes back. She was on her way to becoming, like, a lawyer and stuff, but she had to put a lot of that on hold to have Max and everything. So now that means if she's pregnant again, but, you know, then you have uh, Darcy being like, well, Ben doesn't, you don't know for sure if he's one of, it's like, wait, did he talk to you? It's like, why, why would he talk to me? Like, I'm, obviously, I'm no one. I'm like, he, can he, obviously, as his wife, you, you know, she got nervous. Because it's like, once again, she made all those jokes about him trying to make him nervous and uncomfortable. But now that she was on the other foot now, like, she was kind of like, oh, I'm dead. Because, like, her and Kate are becoming friends. And so she does feel a little awkward about it. Because it's like, right, I did talk to Ben. And he did kind of open up to me about some of his issues. Like, especially in their relationship. She's like, no, no, you guys are all good. So Kate's so sure, like, oh, he'd want more kids. Like, oh, he'd want a whole uh, family band. But... The thing is, he has his own complications in the relationship because he feels like he doesn't really have a word in. Like, you know, it's like he gets to do his thing, but it's always kind of like... It, Kate's the more dominant one because he's she's a more dominant personality in a relationship. He's more the... Um, more submissive. So... I don't know. I'm not. I'm curious to see how that ends up turning out. That whole thing. Like, I don't know if there's ever going to be like a Darcy and a Ben thing because obviously there's a conversation about, you know, um, you know, I was like, oh, like Darcy, like would she ever want to kiss? She's like, oh, I basically, oh, whatever guy, I'd basically ruined his life by doing that. Like, whatever guy. Oh, well, you, you know, oh, find that right guy. Oh, you mean my next victim or something like, that? you know? So she's putting her like once again is a defense mechanism. But I'm curious, is it because she's kind of feeling like Ben might be that guy? Or is it going to be just 
I don't know, like, she she never went caught up with that other guy because that was the night of her parents thing, and just, like, her conversation with them made her just feel so downtrodden about herself, so she went and kind of got plastered. Um, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm interested to see where things kind of go on that front. But obviously, for, like, there was the whole, like, leg workout stuff that, um, the leg press, that Darcy was like, yeah, I couldn't even do that, but, like, you know, Kate told her, it's like, no, like, it's gonna be, like, one at a, uh, all you need is, like, to take it, like, one day at a time. You might not have been able to do it today, but there's always tomorrow or today. Like, it, it's always going to be there. So, I like that, you know, Darcy hooked her up with one of the, um, what was it, uh, the pregnancy test, which is, like, obviously, Kate doesn't want to know, but it's like, yeah, keep it on you. Whenever you're ready, you'll be ready. Because uh, I love that she's like, oh, it's a good thing we have some here, because Judy's been going through them, like, Tic Tacs that you pee on. I'm like, wow. Um, so, that's kind of interesting. Then on the other side of things, obviously Liv is still diving into the whole UFO thing, which I love that Ben was like, no, no, I'm fine with that. Just don't say it was here in patient. Say it was near Jessup. Because it's like, right, we're already known as the murder city. Like, last thing I need to know, be known as is murder and UFOs. I was like, we don't need that. We don't need that press. We're just, we are trying, from a PR standpoint, we're trying to recover this town's uh, image and stuff. So, like, I love that. Um... But the thing is, like, Liv doesn't know who to really kind of confide into. She confides in her SO about it, but he, which she's supportive of it. Sadly, people on the internet aren't, and someone memed it and made it into a, a donut, uh, the video footage, so. But at the same time, I love that also, like, Ben had to fire the old lady who's a doctor. Uh, she she kind of makes diagnosed people, and, like, now, like, Mike ended up having, like, his arm was kind of paralyzed. He's like, now, uh, Deppy, you're going to have to start doing my paperwork. And he was like, she was like, I already do that. He's like, see, well, we're, we're, we've already, we're already prepped and ready. Um, but yeah, Ben had to fire her because she did kind of say that he had cancer and it was pretty bad. It's like, nope, that wasn't Ben's file. So, and I love that, um, Ellen is there just to be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a tell it like it is. And I love that. It's just kind of like, it's like, yeah, the moment she came in here with the wrong file, I knew, like, I went ahead and got some resumes for other people um, ready for you and stuff like that. And it was like, Ben was like, yeah, you could have, at any point in that time frame, you could have stopped her before she gave me the bad news. But it's like, Ben tried to let her down very gently. And then Ellen kind of was like, no, you're getting fired because you're terrible at what you do. It's like, and she's like, well, Ben, you're a good boy. Ellen, it's almost like you're smiling. It's almost like you enjoyed it. She's like, I didn't. I did not not enjoy it, so, but their whole point is to get Harry to be the new doctor and stuff like that, and it's like, oh, it's his birthday soon, so Ben got in his head like, oh, I'll get his, uh, get him when it's his birthday, and end up, um, while he's in a happy mood, then ask him to be fully the town's doctor, you know, so. We'll see how that works out, considering the fact is that Harry's balancing, like, cool, got the baby, which we even saw at the end where everyone's in his house celebrating his birthday, and it's like, cool, I've got the baby in my bag, and the egg just cracked, because, hey, this egg could hatch at any point in time, because, like, the the whole process is completely different, because it's got human DNA, so we have no idea what the um, pregnancy situation is going to be like, because, like, at least, because I think Goliath died, like, six months ago, right, I think? But, other than that... Um, I really liked the whole thing, like, obviously, a combination of many different things have been going on for, uh, Mike. He, obviously, spending time with Abigail, because she ended up, um, he bought stuff from her, because defending her, because that guy's like, oh, she's a murderer, and she's got the audacity to sell her dead husband's stuff after she killed him, but he's like, um, the only one who's, he, and Mike called him out for his shirt, it's like, yeah, uh, get out of here before some flamingos come around wanting to get back the flamingo you killed to make that shirt. Uh, but yeah, bought some books off of her. Give him one of Sam's hats because he was right, really interested in it. But and she could she hold on to it, which that in itself showed for Mike. It's like that's grief. Like she wouldn't hold on to that. Like that's genuine grief. And he's thinking like I made a mistake. That she might not be the and especially because like she's been blamed in town. Granted, she still hasn't gone to court yet. She's in the process of going to court, so they, it's not like it's a surefire deal, but they, obviously with the, her being arrested for it, it's like it's, it, you might as well be guilty. So Mike ends up actually talking to Dan, which I thought was a really nice heart-to-heart -heart that they had, um, you know, from one military guy to another. And so Harry, uh, 
Mike feels like he's kind of been stuck lately and he feels like, right, like, what if I got the wrong person? And he's like, right, like, he's like, you know, may, he thought he made a mistake here and he's like, just like I made a mistake before and because of that mistake, my partner didn't come home, which Dan's like, that's rough. And he talks about it from his own experience of going to Vietnam. Um, he was like, yeah, like, he watched his buddy bleed out, you know, and he, and he was told later on by the doctors, like, there's nothing you could have done. It was a... Um, it was just there was nothing you could do in that situation. It didn't alleviate his Dan's guilt about it. So it's like, right, surviving is for soldiers. No, it's like surviving is one thing, but basically for a soldier, you kind of have to. Um, essentially, it was basically to find a way to move forward to honor those people. We got. so honor your partner by uh, being uh, the best cop you can be, um, and because in Dan's case, he honors Joe. Every day because he used Joe, the restaurant is named Joe's Diner. I was like, that's really beautiful. That was a really touching moment between them. I, I love that. And that ended up inspiring Mike to like figure things out. I was like, right, beforehand, because it was around this part in the last season where Mike like shifted things. Like, I think around this time last season, him and um, Liv made up and that ended up putting them in a good spot partnership wise. So. Now Mike is like, right, before he was like, let's get in the head of the killer. Now let's get in the head of Sam of like, yeah, but why would someone want to kill me? I'm a good dog. I'm really good at my job. There's no malpractice stuff. Um, it must be like, okay, so I must have known something. And it's a good guy. And then it's like, right, uh, Sam was really into these books. So he must have left some clue behind because the detective in this book ends up leaving like evidence or whatever inside the paintings and luckily they found it and it's uh the, the that uh company that uh Asa was looking into he has a whole bunch of names written down so they're going to be investigating things on that front so it's not necessarily the hairy side of things uh but that still could always circle back around um I'm curious if Liv and Harry are ever going to meet up about the whole like, oh wait, there was a spaceship thing there. Like me, so that could also hint that maybe, just maybe, it could hint that maybe um, Harry's um, people are actually here, and maybe even Harry doesn't know it yet. So maybe that's some indication of that. But also this investigation, it's going to definitely be interesting to see where all this goes. I'm assuming this season is going to be ten episodes, like last season. I didn't look into it too much, so. Uh, this is episode 7, so we've got 3 left, potentially. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, where the last few episodes of the season end up taking us. Still plenty of room for some uh, interesting developments and twists and turns, like I said, with the baby on the way and everything already. So, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.